When a signal from an alarm panel requires acknowledgement from an operator, it is considered an event. When an event is available for processing, you will receive both a visual and audible notification. Click the flashing phone icon to acknowledge and accept receipt of the alarm. The highest priority, oldest event in the pending event queue will be displayed. In the top left corner, you can see the alarm panel information, such as the name of the transmitter, the dispatch address, and its current status. In the center section, you can see the type of signal received, and below that, the exact description of the point that was activated. The top right section displays the hierarchy or grouping information of the transmitter. At the bottom left is the detailed procedure the operator should follow for dispatching this type of alarm. The dispatch procedure or instruction can vary depending on the signal type or the source of the alarm. To the right is the call list. An individual or group on the call list can have multiple contact methods. To view the actual phone number, double click on the phone type. The call process box will open to display the number. Click dial or call the number as shown. Then click either answered, no answer, busy, or machine. This will enable the operator comment section. Notice a comment was entered indicating that the front desk, Jessica Mayer, did not answer the phone. You could enter another comment up to 120 characters. Notice both the operator comments and the system comments are displayed in the action log. While processing an event, you may want to check the signal history of the account. Just click on the history tool to view the most recent 20 signals. Other queries involving expanded timeframes are available from the time range tab. When speaking with a home or business owner, you will probably want to verify the identity of the individual by asking for their password. To display passwords, click the Password tool. Then, the Show Passwords button. Only users with a password for the event transmitter are displayed. If the individual states the correct password, highlight the password and click OK. A comment is generated into the action log indicating that the individual correctly verified their password. The attachment tool allows you to access information made in a third-party application, such as a floor plan or a Word document. Additionally, the attachment tool can be used to connect to a DVR, NVR, IP camera, or a URL. In this case, we are going to connect to a webcam on the internet. Attachments can be linked at multiple hierarchy access levels, thus allowing access to multiple attachments while processing a single event. After you have notified the proper parties on the call list, what happens next? Typically, you would click on the Close Event tool. The Close Event tool offers three options. Resolve the event, return the event to pending, or place the event in wait. Select Resolve the event if all of the responding parties have been notified and no further action is required. Select Return to pending if you are working with a lower priority alarm and a higher priority alarm requires your attention. Choose Place the event in wait if an officer is investigating the cause of the alarm and will get back to you with additional information. When you place an event in wait, the default time is 10 minutes, but the interval can vary from 1 to 480 minutes. For this example, let's close the event. Choose Resolve the event, then pick a particular resolution code. Ensure that it's the proper resolution code, then click OK. 
the current event will close. If there is another event in the pending event queue, it will drop to your screen automatically for processing. If there are no additional events in the pending event queue, the center of the screen will be gray. When a new signal enters the system that requires acknowledgement, the phone icon will flash, starting the process all over again.